as a hardwood graduate dr vishwanathan have played the role of an educator social entrepreneur and various esteemed positions of many institutions throughout tamil nadu during his extensive career life he has also been elected as the member of parliament and has worked representing his people he started pillor institute of technology as pillor engineering college in 1984 and has grown into india's number one private university with very good international ranking by qs and times higher education recently government of india accorded the institution of eminence eminent status for vit but from mathis words himself he is one of the living example of social entrepreneurship at its best and 50 hands hope to follow his path in future as the founder and chancellor of velur velur institute of technology it is my privilege to welcome dr g vishwanathan to officially inaugurate 50 hands organization and address the audience good morning to those who are from canada and us and good evening from india and neighboring countries at the outset let me thank mr madi the executive director of t hands for inviting me to officially inaugurate the organization today dr sinivasan the founder and the principal of knowledge in suit of technology selam dr samuel rajkumar sir sadish rajamani dr swarnalatha and other participants from various parts of the globe i would like to thank all of you for participating in this and i am so glad to inaugurate officially the 50 hands organization located in toronto canada i have been asked to speak on the role of academic institutions in social entrepreneurship what is the role of social entrepreneurship it is to help the needy the poor and the downtrodden so that they can also come up in life on par with the advanced people or advanced countries the world is full of inequality among the countries you will find inequality the uh, shining example will be the per capita income out of nearly 200 countries only 75 countries have more than 10000 per capita 10000 dollars per capita income and uh, there are some countries where per capita income is 100000 dollars and there are countries where it is less than 1000 dollars also so there is a vast difference take for example our own three countries canada's per capita is about 45000 dollars us it is 57000 dollars india it is 2200 dollars we are also trying to grow no doubt india is growing in fact in the total gdp we have become world's number 5 in fact uh, two years ago we were number 7 now we have overtaken france and uk and we are occupying a fifth place next only to us china japan and germany so if you take as a whole uh, gdp as a whole our ranking is 5 in the world but if you take the per capita income our ranking is 140 so it makes all the difference that's why there is a need for people to come up in life and social entrepreneurship is a part of it there is inequality in society there is inequality in economics there is inequality in education various part of life take for example higher education in india the national average is 26% those who are eligible for higher education in india is about 140 million children between the age of 18 to 
out of which only about 35 to 36 million students have access to education in about 1,000 universities and uh, 45, 50,000 colleges. Of course, there is difference within the states also. For example, Tamil Nadu is the leader in higher education with about almost 50% GER, and there are states with uh, 15 or 20% also. So this has to be taken care of. For example, India is one of the most unequal countries in the world. We are number two, next only to Russia. Russia is the most unequal country, society. In India, according to estimate, the top 1% of people own 73% wealth of the country. This is how inequality prevails here. And uh, even though the per capita is $2,200, if you take divide them into two strata of society, the upper status per capita income is $75,000 in India, and it is less than $1,000 for the lower strata. That's how society could be divided. But there is an opportunity for us, all of us to grow together. And that's where I want the educational institutions to play a role, and especially in encouraging social entrepreneurship. The social entrepreneurship is nothing but running an institution, a non-profit organization, for the purpose of the society, helping the society, and especially the drought order. You know, India has a problem of rural India. Um, we have more than 600,000 villages in the country. And uh, that's why Gandhiji said, India lives in its villages. We are trying to help the villages in the last 73 years, but still there are thousands of villages without electricity. And there are crores of people without having electricity in their homes. So this is a problem which the government is trying to solve, but it's not easy to be um, solved within a short period. So what is it that we can do? How is it the social entrepreneurship could be taken up in all parts of the country and of course in many other countries also. Uh, I would request Madhi not to restrict himself to India and some other countries. I want him to spread all over the world, wherever possible, Asia, Africa particularly. Even in uh, South America, there are problematic countries. Of course, uh, we, we have generally we have no law and order problem much, but in South America it is there. I find the African countries also want to come up. Uh, they are trying to go for higher education, but it's very difficult for them because uh, the government doesn't find enough resources to spend enough money on education for the poor and the middle class. In India also, in fact, you know, the new education policy has been approved by cabinet two days back. Uh, of course, it has not yet been implemented. It has to go to parliament and uh, state governments have to implement them. Uh, the demand for a long time from Dr. Radhakrishnan uh, time onwards is that 6% of the GDP should be spent on education. But we have never crossed 4% so far. There are 147 countries in the world which spend more than us, more than India, for education and particularly higher education. There is another field where we are lagging behind. Almost all the developing countries lagging behind is R&D, research and development, where we don't spend enough money. I think India spends about less than 1%, about 0.7% on uh, research and development. That's why we are unable to compete with the developed countries or advanced countries. So it makes a lot of difference to give education to the people. Once we give education, uh, the inequality may not disappear, but it will come down. Certainly it will come down. So we must give priority to education and particularly higher education. Of course, school education, we are comparatively doing well. 
but uh, there also even though we have a, a responsibility for the government to give free and compulsory education up to the age of 14 now the new policy is going to change it up to the age of 18 this is true in case of those who attend the government schools what about those children who attend the private schools they don't get any help from government and same thing for higher education i find in the new education policy of course uh, I, I i took part in the deliberations of the kasturangan committee i spent uh, nearly two hours with them requesting them to do something for the poor students to go for higher education which has not happened of course the committee has mentioned that 25% of students in higher education to get free education and the another 25 should get scholarship but the report is silent that who will finance it either the state or center to do it or both of them should do it otherwise the rest 50% of the student will have to bear the cost of the other half that will increase the cost of education which in again uh, will uh, uh, stop many students from going to higher education these are all problems in the developing countries and uh, there is a need for social entrepreneurship in all these countries those developing countries particularly where there is so much economic inequality i find social entrepreneurship uh, basically you may require funding and uh, there are cases where such organizations run regular business earn money and they spend it on social entrepreneurship programs for example you want to construct homes and give it to homeless people on cost basis without any profit but you may not require you may require enough money which is may not be coming out of this you may run some other business like others with profit motive get that money and put into this project this is also possible probably uh, the 50 hands may consider such things uh, not only maybe it may not be necessary in those countries canada or the us but it may require outside uh, us and canada particularly india and countries like this where you can encourage students and uh, while they are students i think uh, uh, prosinivasan was very happy that his student has become not only an entrepreneur he has founded a important uh, organization 50 hands uh, it's always the pride of uh, professors uh, whether he is a prime minister chief minister governor uh, when he is, he sees his teacher he gets up he, he may be in a higher position but always we respect teachers in tamil we say uirai kuduthavar petro uirai kuduthavar aasiriya so it's only parents who give life but those who give the uh, pride in life progress in life are the teachers that's how professor sinivasan must be a proud teacher because the students are coming up uh, uh, this is something which uh, i appreciate the 50 hands started as a small organization now it started growing 50 hands have already become 260 hands now uh, i think it is bound to grow and it's going to be a world level organization you should compete with un you should compete with uh, unido unesco etc uh, so that all the countries will have the benefit you just motivate them find somebody there uh, motivate him and let him start let us have one madi in each country so that all the countries will have the benefit of this especially those who want to grow uh, and uh, those who want to compete with the advanced nations and i'm so happy that what has started from toronto is going to occupy the whole world and uh, india being one of the largest countries of the world we are only next to china and uh, it will have a very good effect on india uh, it should be should not be restricted to any state it should go all over india probably you can find people in many parts of india so that all of them can take part and all the poor and the downtrodden will be benefited and especially those who want to go for startups they should be encouraged uh, with this i thank the organizers um, mr madhi and all the office bearers and mr satish rajamani for having invited me to inaugurate this today thank you very much
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your, you know, speech. Really inspiring. Thank you so much, Dr. Vishwanathan. You have blessed us immensely. And thank you for your kind words. He has mentioned how the inequality in society uh, and the difference in per capita income has affected um, our growth and potential. Uh, so how it, social entrepreneurship like ours will help in growing countries like India uh, as first world countries. And I also thank your efforts on educating women uh, and empowering them. Thank you.